This is the War Room Roundtable podcast, the show that takes you around the world to share interviews with some of the most successful and relevant businessmen and women on the planet, hear their stories, and get the most important business lessons they've learned on the road to success, and get exclusive advice on how to implement their successes into your life and business. The War Room Roundtable is brought to you by your hosts, Jason Miller, CEO of Strategic Advisor Board, and Philip Llanos, CEO of Own the Rhythm, and former podcast host for Entrepreneur and Inc. Magazine. Welcome to the War Room. Amanda, it is an absolute pleasure to have you here. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited. Yeah. It's uh it's not often we get to have somebody who specializes in story. However, uh, we have had one or two people who showed, exemplified the power of story without them actually knowing that's what they were doing. Yeah. So if we can take it in that direction, I'd love that. But before we go there, I got to start it off with the question that always kicks up the dust. And that is, do you yourself come from a family of entrepreneurs? Oh, you know what? My grandfather was an entrepreneur. He was a dairyman. He built a, a small empire for himself and his family. So yeah. Wow. Okay. And actually, you know what I realized? I was doing one of those their genograms, right? That's what they're called a few um, weeks ago. And my son and I were just talking about someday we're going to open a coffee shop. And I was doing the genogram and I was like, you know, your grandpa, who you're named after on the other side, the last place I saw him was serving coffee in his coffee shop that I forgot all about because I was so little. So wow. I guess I had it on both sides. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Hold on. I, I, I've always loved the idea of a coffee shop. That's cool. Yeah. And, and so, fun. <laughs> so you start off there, right? And uh, growing up then, do you sort of like have the proverbial lemonade stand and things of that nature? Or when did business start coming into your life more specifically? Yeah. So Actually, um, business and money got a pretty bad rap when I was a kid. <laughs> so um, I was pretty creative, but it wasn't it wasn't an exciting thing for my family. Like the the part of the family that was doing really well for themselves through entrepreneurship were kind of villainized, let's say. So it's interesting to say that out loud. I'm like, hmm, that makes some of my engagements with my business kind of interesting. Um, so I didn't really think about it until, let's see, my son was about three years old because I'd actually gone to school to become a journalist and then quickly decided not a journalist. I need to help young people learn how to think critically because that was the one thing that no one taught me how to do. <laughs> and so I got to college. I don't know how I got into the honors program, but they told me, you know, here's the, the stack of books. I had to read more pages in a week than I had in my entire high school career. Um, and so I thought, you know what? I wasn't prepared for this. And now I'm asking these big questions about life and God and <laughs> questioning everything. So I decided, you know, I'm going to help kids start asking these questions earlier when they're like in the safety of their families and their culture. And so I went to become a teacher, got into that system and realized quickly that I wasn't emotionally healthy enough to deal with what was going on there. They put me in, as they do with a lot of new teachers, <laughs> they gave me the classroom that Nobody wanted all of the kids in that classroom. You know, I had this one lighting up his pipe and this one selling drugs in the back and this one. And so um, I just realized like in order to connect with the kids, I had to use story. And so I started to do that. Um, and on the last day, when you're talking about the importance of story, on the very last day when I had to leave, I was in tears because I just really wanted to be able to have enough to give to them and to my little boy when I went home and I didn't. And the drug dealer walked into my room and he said, you know, Mrs. Johnson, and I'm wondering why he's in my room because this is his most profitable time of the day. <laughs> he said, I really want to tell you that we all appreciate you trying to connect with us and teach us, but here's why we can't. 35 seats in the room. 
He knew the story of every kid in that room. This one can't learn because her brother was killed in a gang fight last week. This one is having trouble because her dad is an alcoholic. And I mean, he knew everyone's story and everyone's pain. And I realized, oh, maybe he's not just trying to make money. Maybe he's actually trying to help uh, his buddies in the only way that he knows how. So that was an interesting eye opening. And when I went to the other teachers to say, like, can you help me figure this out? Um, they said, go to your doctor and get some medication because it's mm -hmm. the only way you're going to make it through this. And so I realized that wasn't the place for me. <laughs> yeah. And um, I got a small job with a family friend who was, she'd started a writing instruction company online. And so we were helping people who were really great at math and science, but couldn't put an essay together to save their lives, pass basic skills tests. And so I was you know, succeeding there, helping her do that. And then we went out to market it, really valuable entrepreneurial lesson. We went to the wrong people, if you don't believe in destiny. And we went to the people who were just all of these entrepreneurs and we were telling them about the business. And they said, well, we don't want you to teach us how to write well. We want you to fix what we've been writing because it's not effective. And so while she went and figured out whether she wanted to pursue this business in the long run, I became the editor for a small group of entrepreneurs. I started helping with blogs and books and, um, and that's basically how it started. It, it came out of a a silly little accident where I was trying to help someone else grow their business and it turned into one of my own. Awesome. No, I, I yeah. appreciate you going into the story there. And when you started doing that and saw, did you immediately feel a connection to being able to work with business people or has it, has it just been a consistent, like, wow, I, I'm really doing this, even though I thought I'd be doing that. Cause that happens too. Yeah, I know. I love it when people are like, how'd you get here? I'm like, have you ever played pinball? It's a little bit like that. Um, because I just was kind of trying to make my life work. You know, life wasn't easy during this phase of my life. The finances, the marriage, I was taking care of a sick grandma and I had a little boy at home. So it was kind of like survival town for me. And I was doing what needed to be done, not really thinking like, oh, I'll do this for the rest of my life. But then while I was helping that mentor of mine who'd given me the writing instruction job, she gave me an editing job on her own book and asked me to come over for lunch and give her the, the down and dirty of what I thought about her book. And I asked her, what is it like to know that the person who starts reading your book is not going to be the same person who finishes it? Like it was a truly transformational experience. And she said, oh, it feels amazing. When are you going to write your book? And I was like, uh, my what? Because <laughs> I've been helping other people be really successful um, in their writing, whether it was college papers, high school papers, these blogs and, and books that I was working on for other people. But it never once occurred to me that I would have my own message. And she kind of pushed at that little, like, the, I think the question that she asked me was, what value do you have to give to the world today? And that just made me bawl my eyes out. So I gave her a hug and I left. But how, by, by the time I got about halfway home, I knew. Like I, I had reconnected with it. And it was through this scene that you ever, you ever like when you're trying to piece something together and like an old memory will just pop in and give you the answer. It was like that. And it was the scene of my son who was about three at the time. And he had broken something in my grandma's house when we were living there at the time. And she was screaming at him, bad boy, bad boy, bad boy. And I was like, mm, this is the one thing you didn't call my son. Like there was one message that I was really clear I wasn't going to pass along to my son. And that was that his worth was determined by his behavior. I was really, really clear. Like you're a good boy making choices. Sometimes they're good choices and sometimes they're terrible choices. And so I've been working on this really hard and he was three in really big trouble with his great grandma. And I took off down the hallway to do something to her. I don't know what I was, <laughs> but I got to the end of the hallway and I saw him with his hands on his hips, looking up at her. And he was like, I'm not bad. I made a bad choice and I'm sorry. And I thought, well, my work is done. Like that was a huge thing that was, had crippled me 
that my worth was so tied to my performance. And so I realized that was the message that I really wanted to communicate. And that decision that day, that was kind of like the start of my life changing forever. That was really, I would say, the birth of the entrepreneur. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, before I go any further, Jason, do you have some thoughts on that? Well, first and foremost, a huge amount of time, businesses are born out of sheer accident, right? Uh, it happens all the time. I, I can tell you, my very first business I ever started was a complete accident. It's because somebody asked me to do something. I was like, huh. Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> and then that spiraled from there. And, and then I, you know, I mean, I was always in an entrepreneurial family, but, but that's really what caught the bug at that point. This was gosh, way back in the nineties, but, uh, but, you know, it's, it's interesting how many people ignore that feeling their entire life. Mm -hmm. Right. You just ignore it. They're like, nope, I got to stay in this little box that was created for me in my life. And this other thing keeps hitting me in the side of the head. I know there's something there, but mm -hmm. push it away, push it away, push it away. Right. And, you know, it's, it's great that you embraced it because look what you've accomplished now. And yeah. that it, it just makes you wonder how many other accomplishments in this world have been missed, right? Mm -hmm. Because somebody just keeps ignoring that thing, that superpower that they have, yeah. and it just never makes it to the world. Yeah. It's crazy. And as I, as I think about all of the entrepreneurs that I've supported over the last 15 years now, um, one of the things that, I, that comes up for me around that is how our superpowers are often linked. And this is really, this is maybe the most important and exciting part of my work is that the superpowers are often linked to some sort of wound. So like for me, when I was little, being curious, trying to create something, trying to like step outside of that box, that was not a, that was not something that was celebrated, right? I got into trouble for asking too many questions. I got shushed when I started to make connections between like this person said this but then over here they were doing that right because nobody wanted me to see what I was seeing and so I started to feel like it was more kryptonite than superpower so part of the work that I've had to do in order to be able to stay on the entrepreneur journey is like own that as a superpower and understand how it tries to stop me when I'm getting close to that point where I'm like, oh, I'm about to ask a question that I would have gotten in so much trouble with. <laughs> no. yeah. So um, I, I wonder how much of that plays into people missing those opportunities because, yeah. because it wasn't something that was celebrated. My parents, it took five years and three years of like really good work in the world. You know, like I'd figured something out and things were going so well. And I remember I had this big, huge event and I invited my parents and it was the first time that they ever saw me on a stage, ever saw me speak in front of anyone. And I just remember their faces, like they were dumbfounded. They had no clue, even though I had spent all of these years, these years telling them I'm on this person's stage, I'm helping these people do that. It was like, they didn't have the, the schema to be able to connect to what it was until they were there in the experience. And they're like, wow, you really helped people. One more little thought there. It's interesting why through our life, well, there's usually a reason why people don't like us to ask questions, right? There's usually a reason behind it, right? Because mm -hmm. of insecurity or can't answer the question, whatever. But it just brings me back to when I was in basic training, I, I'll make this short, I promise. But when I was in basic training, part of it, they do this nuclear, like a nuclear bomb goes off, right? So the procedure for that is make sure you got your helmet on, all that stuff. You face the blast. So the blast will hit your helmet, right? And my weapon was sticking out like right here, right? Open, right? And the drill sergeant comes by and he kicks me right in the stomach. And he goes, get that weapon in there. 
you don't get it in there, that barrel's going to melt. And I looked up at him and I thought, and I said, if the barrel's going to melt, what's going to happen to me? <laughs> and he just looked at me like, and he turned around and walked off. <laughs> so it's like, yep. you know, I, I really do believe we have to go through our life challenging about everything, right? Um, because there's so much bs in the world today right and you got to just challenge things that's really important so yep. thank thanks for indulging that little story oh, i just yeah. wanted no, to, to, to tie that. that tie that in there i love it i mean it's <laughs> it's true we're we're kind of we don't we don't and i think that's one of the things that i see often too is like what a relief it is for people to get inside of a community of entrepreneurs because they finally feel seen. Like I've had these ideas and everyone around me thinks I'm crazy. You know, <laughs> it's like, no, I want to write a book, but everyone doesn't understand like how hard this is. Why don't you just sit down and write a book? You know? And it's like, when you get into those spaces with people who are like, yeah, this is tough because we've been ans asking these same questions for a long time and having people look at us like we're nuts, you know? So yeah. yeah, there's, there's, a, that's a, all of this goes to, to the point I was trying to bring up earlier. And Jason, please, more of that. I love it when you <laughs> share stories like that, man. Uh, Cause not everybody gets to see that. What I was going to say is, especially as somebody who, who works in, in the narrative arena, is the oftentimes what holds even entrepreneurs back comes back to a narrative, as you said, that they're working through or against by not mm -hmm. working through it. Right. And I've heard of like journaling exercises and things of that nature. Uh, and I was wondering if you in the work that you do, if you've come across any kind of frameworks like that, that sort of help people really see it for what it is and, and get that visibility, just like just like being able to see, hey, my as you were saying earlier, my behavior, whether it's helping my business or not, doesn't determine my actual self-worth, mm -hmm. things of that nature. Is does that does that ring a bell with narrative oh, yeah. and all that? Oh yeah. I, I, I truly started business thinking. I went to my very first retreat because I realized there were some things, you know, you test them and you realize quickly, like, this is never going to work. I'm trying to work with busy entrepreneurs, like on a weekly basis and expecting them to do stuff in between. Can't do this. I can't get to clarity this way. So I'm going to kidnap them for three days at a retreat. <laughs> I mean, you know, kidnap, but really take them out of their lives, give them some space and some distance and work with them to help them map out their book. That's all I was going to do. Let's map out the book. But then the tears came. And then there were people on the ground in tears. And then I was like, oh, okay. This looks a little bit like those transformational rooms I was in. That's interesting. Okay. And I literally heard a voice. I don't know if you believe in God or whatever you call it. But for me, it was the first time I'd heard that voice of guidance in a really long time. And I said, it's because true to intention isn't about the message as much as it is about the messenger. Like my, my particular um, intention and purpose with this business is to help people become more whole, to get back to who they were before the damage happened, before the stories got started. So what ends up happening is I'll say, and it's, it's one of my favorite parts, even though it's usually kind of hard and tough for them, but they're usually really excited and we start getting clarity and we're working together and doing all of these things and exercises. And then I say, okay, now it's time to write the first scene. What do you mean scene? How do I do that? Right? Because you could tell a story as a narrator, but you don't really feel it when narrators tell stories, right? Like if I just told you about this happened and then this happened and then this happened. But if I invite you into the scene and I tell you there was pressure in my chest, my heart was racing, my thoughts were, I'm not smart enough to write a book. I couldn't possibly do this. Then all of a sudden you're there in the scene with me, right? So I ask people to go back and, and write the scene from the inside, be the character. Nobody wants to do that. Everyone wonders if they have hired the wrong person in that moment. <laughs> They're just like, just kidding. I, that's not how all of the books that I love to read are. I'm like, mm -hmm. um, but you're here because you could have asked any other coach to help you write a good book. But if you're here, it means that there's a story that needs to be healed. And this is how we find it. 
because I don't want to go and write back. I don't want to go back to that story and write from the inside because there's still something that hurts. And if that is at, is at all connected to my mission, vision, and message for the world, then this thing never happens because this thing always hurts. And someone's going to ask, well, why are you doing that? And then what are you going to say? Right. Well, you know, if they haven't worked through that narrative. So th as they go through this process, you talked about frameworks. There was something that occurred to me, I actually heard myself saying it um, while I was doing a, um, a workshop in 2017. So by this time, I'd been working for almost 10 years with people watching this process happen over and over and over again. I could even tell you when it was going to happen. It's like the 60 to 70% mark of a book. So the first scene, they like hate my guts. They don't want to do it, right? Be in the character right from there. Okay, great. And then they're like, oh, okay, can't take a break. Yes, I need you to take a break because I need you to come up to narrator. And I need you to look at what brought you between this scene and this scene. Okay. That was, this person came into my life, this book fell off a shelf, this, right? So not only are they having these moments of looking at their pain from the inside out, but then they're starting to see all of these moments of grace that happened in between to connect them or helping them along the journey. And so they get this really cool opportunity to see their whole narrative at once instead of to just look at the trauma or to just look at this is all the cool stuff that happened, happened to me, which is how people usually get to me. Like I overcame this. I did this. It's like, that's awesome. And why does it matter? Where did you come from? What was the, what was the hero's journey there? So I'd ask them to step into narrator and then character and then narrator and then character. And about the 60 or 70% mark, almost predictably with every book, I get a phone call or a text or an email that says, Remember how I was telling you like this stuff always happens whenever I try to work on the book because things happen, right? Finances go weird. Business stuff comes up. Uh, relationship drama. Oh my gosh. My people who have um, real serious re relationship pain in their past, that stuff can spiral up while you're working on it. Old health issues. So I, I was thinking about this, that this stuff always comes up whenever I start working on a project like this. And I think I know why now, because have you noticed that for the last three or four chapters, every time someone says this to me, I respond this way. I say almost the exact same words every time, or I say yes when I should say no, or I walk out of the room instead of confronting the problem or whatever the film of blank is. And I'll say, yes, I've noticed that. And I, hope, I think I have some conversation like that coming up soon. I'm like, well, what are you going to do differently? What, what script are you going to use that's going to be different? What, what are you going to do to stay in the room, right? And so that's the moment where I say people get the opportunity to pick up the pen and actually be the co-author of their life again, because they don't have to be just the character who can't see the magic that's happening. And they don't have to be just the person who sees all the magic, but doesn't want to feel the, the pain of life, right? Life has some suffering and some tough elements to it. Um, but they get to be someone who can hold both of those perspectives at once and actually start to direct their life forward and, and change their story at that point. So that's kind of a framework that's come out of this process. And through that, I have done, I've created a lot of curriculum um, that are very intentional, like narrative therapy sort of processes. And I call them quests where a few people jump in at a time and you know, do some writing every day and reflect on it with each other and support each other through the process. And it's, it's quite amazing um, because I used to think that I, as a coach, had to be the one to help someone see what they were missing or what was in the way or what story was hurting them, but uh, because I would always see it before them. But I found that giving them a pen and setting a timer with a good question they know ex they have all of their answers. And sometimes they come up out of it and they're like, that felt really important and it feels connected to this, but I can't see it. And at that point I can go, well, this and then, right. And I can help them that way, but they, they're telling themselves the answers. So hmm. pretty remarkable. It's really interesting. Yeah. I feel like, I feel like I can visualize the process and why it's important to pull people away from what they usually do day to day. Otherwise, they can't you essentially 
If I take them to the retreat, take them to become a narrator, only to invite them in the room to become the character again and the narrator. And, you know, Mm -hmm. the process continues. And uh, it's funny that while that's a framework for writing books or what have you, it's also helping people zoom in and out of their lives because sometimes we spend our whole life zoomed in. Uh, yeah. So I, I I can see the process that you're doing, and it's it's amazing. It's a, I think it's a great invitation to reflect, especially if no one has ever done it. As entrepreneurs, constantly moving, it doesn't happen often, you know. So mm-hmm. uh, I think true to intention and what you're doing there um, is exciting. And if people wanted to get involved with that, uh, where would they visit to to check out more of what you're doing? A social channel, website. Um, well, true to intention.com is probably the best place to go. Uh, they can also find me on Facebook at true to intention. And, um, we're also really excited to be launching, um, a publishing house called save by story publishing. So that'll be kind of our one-stop shop for people who work on the content development with me and, um, and then need to launch their brand. Interesting. That's yeah. exciting. And, uh, if you could go back knowing what you know now, to uh, the teachers struggling to connect with the students because, you know, Lord knows that there's so many things happening. But knowing what you know now, what would you say to that teacher in the room? You know what? I would say that you gave it your best shot and that you don't know it yet, but you're being asked to go change the system from a different angle because that's exactly what's happened. Several of my clients are transforming education. And so it's kind of a really fun little story loop that I get to make a difference in the space that I was first called to. Right on. Okay. Before I go any further, I want to check in with Jason. Yeah. You know, when you think of like uh, psychology and, and counseling and all these things, right. It's like, you're using elements from those things, like to pull, pull the dark out, but then complement it with the light too. Right. Mm -hmm. Which is, which is really a kind of a cool angle because then somebody writes a book and you're really getting the genuine, true self from that. Right. So it's like, it's not just the unicorns and butterflies part, Mm -hmm. (laughs) which is most books, right. It just talks about all the good stuff. Right. Because people think, Oh God, who wants to hear about the bad stuff? Well, the bad stuff is what makes the good stuff. Mm -hmm. Right. And we all go through those challenges in life. Why not share those too? Gosh, we all have them. Hell, I got a couple truckloads of them myself. So, but Mm -hmm. I think it's great. I think it's a great approach. And I think you really cornered something there. And, you know, I think there's a lot of good to be done there for sure. Thank you. Yeah. And you know, I mean, if you think about why do you pick up books, it's usually because you have question, a burning question, or you're in some pain and you don't know anyone that you trust enough or who has the experience to help you sort it out. Right. Like, so if we don't, if we don't go there and tell people like I've been there, they don't trust us. Like it, they're like, Oh, this is just another unicorn and butterfly book. Great. Another person who's making six figures or seven figures and has this perfect life. And, um, you know, at the end of a lot of our books, we'll have these hard conversations because everyone wants it to be tied up in a neat bow. And it's like, but is that real? not instagram family you know (laughs) like you can you can build a brand like that a lot of people do yeah um but i've watched a lot of people sacrifice parts of themselves um that i just don't think it's necessary if we can just be honest with each other and be on the journey with each other i think it's a lot richer right i agree uh if there's no objections then uh jason uh, we take it to the grand finale drum roll Uh, um, <laughs> right. I've got to get better. You know, I know how to beatbox. I should, I should probably just do it right. But there's something, there's something about it, the way my brain switches when I'm podcasting <laughs> that I'm not a musician. You know. Um, but with that said, uh, the grand finale, uh, Amanda, is if you could have invited anybody based on everything we talked about today to sit in, join, either contributing or just listening to this conversation today. Uh, who would you have loved to have had here with us and why? I'm going to say 
Dr. Jordan B. Peterson because yeah. he is one of those that's not afraid to ask hard questions and engage them in front of people. So I feel like he models what I'm saying as a messenger, but he's also just so well educated in myth and story and narrative therapy and psychology. Like I would just love to ask him questions. Yeah, no, I'm a fan myself. Uh, definitely have seen many a video of him not only asking hard questions and discussing them, but giving hard answers and people not liking that uh, from yep. all sides and all walks of life. Uh, definitely a character. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah. And, and you know, I, I find that uh, his lectures that, that he eventually decided to tape are definitely worth looking at. Even how he uh, went beyond the lectures, which is I always think is an important uh, anecdote to share, is that he uh, he stepped onto Quora for like three months before anyone knew what Quora was as a website, mm -hmm. really, where it was it wasn't really that popular yet, and people were asking all kinds of questions that because they didn't have access to like a psychotherapist or this or that. So, without giving medical you know advice, obviously he, was, he gave philosophical perspective advice, but he his answers were the most sought after. They were upvoted, and eventually he became relatively well known enough that what beyond the academic circles that he exploded into mm. this cultural icon that most people know him as today. Yeah. And so I'm glad that you that you mentioned him because it's rare that I get a chance to talk about someone like that and how that parallels into uh, one of the many ambitions of uh, entrepreneurs and business owners, which is uh, thought leadership, right? And uh, working with someone like you, I can see how that's also something that's well within reach if they haven't found a way to do that yet. Yeah. By going away to these releases with a uh, true to intention <laughs> and, yeah. and getting just getting out of the box before you go back into the ring. Uh, so yeah. uh, thank you for bringing that up. Those are my closing thoughts, uh, Jason. Yeah, it's again, uh, just we've had so many wonderful dynamics of the story of bringing business from nothing to something to how you get there to what you do to all these things, just amazing the amount of, you know, trials, tribulations, hardships, all these things that you go through with entrepreneurship. And at the end of the day, it's like you really look at it. We all have the same story. That's the crazy part, right? Mm -hmm. We all kind of have the same story. It's just a different plug-in of narrative, right? Yeah. And I think that's what really bands business owners together is that, right? Is we all know already, typically when you step in a room, you kind of connect before you actually even connect a lot of times. Mm -hmm. And it's because you can feel that connection. It's like military, right? I've got buddies. I, I won't even talk to them for like 10 years. And then all of a sudden I'll get a phone call and we just pick up right where we left off 10 years ago. It's like, we just didn't even, it's like we were talking yesterday. You just pick right up. And that's the beautiful thing about business owners is there's such that dynamic. And thank you for doing what you do. Thank you for taking the time to come here today and share your story, what you have going on, the importance of what you're doing. Um, we appreciate it. More than you know, for sure. So yeah. thank you. Thank you for the conversation. I love talking about this stuff and hearing other people's perspective on it. So I yeah. appreciate the opportunity. Right awesome. on. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks for listening to the War Room Roundtable with your hosts, Jason Miller and Philip Lanos. Please leave your feedback and visit strategicadvisorboard.com to get the latest and greatest business advisement on the planet. Follow us on social media for updates. And always remember, if you can dream it and believe it, then you can go achieve it. We'll see you in the next episode.